Okay, while well the tank's cooking and we're waiting for tools for the engine, um, I think I'm going to start by uh, taking the carburetor off and possibly dismantling it. The top ring um, unscrewed okay and the top cap's come loose, but the slider inside is definitely uh, quite well seized in there. So I'm going to get some penetrating oil in there and I'm just going to gently work it um, and see if we can get that out. Again, I won't film it because it'll be long and tedious. WD-40 and a little bit of pressure um, using a wide bladed flat screwdriver underneath the slider, gently prying, uh, got that moving and eventually it just slid out. fossilised o-ring this is the um, first carburetor I think I've ever dismantled so forgive me if I'm doing it wrong stuff. I didn't know metal could get dry rot. This is pink come out. It's thicker at this end than it is at this end so I'm guessing it does. Seized in there. This stinks, by the way. It smells really bad. These floats are held on with a hinge that goes across the back of the carburetor here. It seems to be wider at this end and thin at this end, so I'm assuming it has to come out this way. Um, so I'm going to see if I can find something small enough just to just to tap it to get it moving because um, pulling on this end is just going to chew up the end so see what I can find so I've got a small nail I don't want to damage the pink so I think it's made of brass so it's going to be softer than the nail I'm just going to see if a gentle tap at this end will get it going I think we all know the answer to that Oh, we may have some movement now. Yes, we've got movement. Still been a fight, I'm going to slide it out. There we go one pin. Okay, so we've got floats and they're orientated so that right, they're orientated so that the curve of the hinge is facing downwards or upwards depending on which way the carburetor is but from this perspective it's facing downwards. Let's see if the needle wants to come out. I'm going to get a carburetor repair kit so hopefully it should come with all these parts. Be careful to bugger this up. 
Okay, that's come loose. So this jet goes in this hole here. one very blocked jet. So that I think is the main jet, this one. And this is the needle seat. Don't forget the gasket. Right, we've got two screws. One of them I think is the fast running screw, which is this one, which controls how the slider sits in the barrel at idle. I'm going to wind it in before I wind it out, just give me a rough starting point. Half, one, one and a half, two, Two and a half. So two and a half for the uh, slow running screw, fast running screw, whatever you want to call it, idle speed. Okay, and we've got a spring on a needle. It's a shame it's a little bit rusty that. And then I think we have the idle um, circuit screw, mixture screw, which is this one here. I count this one in as well. Oh, that feels pretty stiff. Half, one, and a smidge. I don't want to force it. It could be gunk. Let's call it one. One and a quarter. Okay, that's one very grubby looking screw. That's that one. Okay, so I guess it's the choke mechanism, which is quite complicated, really. We have a lever that, as I pull it down, a little trap door comes down. And within the trap door, there is a spring-loaded door that allows air to bleed through under different loads. And inside the mechanism, there's an arm that lifts and lowers that particular piece. I'm assuming the whole unit comes out the top, but... I think we've got to start with the lever, remove that, and then possibly the uh, the mechanism will come apart from there. One nut. One split washer. Then there's a spacer, like a top hat. I don't know if that's in focus or not, but this smaller, narrower end inserts into this gap here. It's like a bush, effectively. Also, of note, it has a metal faced washer on there, so I don't know if that'll separate later on or whether they're sort of permanently bonded. I suspect they're separate items. Is this spring loaded? So as you retract the lever, there is this rubber dust cap that goes in the gap between the two. And then the lever comes out. And the lever has a small key on it. So that, I'm assuming, engages with the lever mechanism. 
this lever sits on top of the slider and as it's ratcheted up and down uh, it's allowed to slide in this area here. Um, to get it out, it took me a while to work out, you have to drop this right to the bottom so the, effectively the choke is closed and that allows you to disengage the lever and pull it off. You can't do it while it's in the up position. I'm going to have a few practice attempts to get it back together to find out how much of a bastard this is going to be. Could be easy, could be hard. Right, after much fiddling, I've found a technique to get the slider back in and out. Um, it's not 100% straightforward, but that mini magnet helps you line everything up. Oh, just spotted something. That's this here. There's always something that doesn't want to come off. <laughs> Snap! That's the drain plug. A little bit of fettling and that loosen that up. I just didn't want to strip the head out of it. All the threads for that matter. There's a little rubber o-ring on that as well. So that is as far as I can go I think. Right, hopefully my ultrasonic cleaner will arrive this week and then this will get a bath in that um, and we'll take it from there. This gasket doesn't want to come off. Oh, I'll do that off camera. Anyway, there we go. One carburetor in bits and hopefully I've got a record now of um, how to put it back together again. Okay, I uh, came to look at the needle as well because obviously I want to throw this in for a clean. Um, and the whole needle just pushes up from beneath and it has this little widget on top it's kind of that orientation so it's got the two little cutouts at the front I don't think it matters I think they just act as a spring to add resistance so that comes off and that's steel that part and then the needle slides out the needle has a C-clip which is currently right bang smack in the middle of the uh, adjusters on there. So I'm not going to take that off. I think this needle is just going to get a manual clean rather than go through the ultrasonic cleaner. And I'm not going to play with that setting because I suspect this has never been a part. So this should be factory settings. So I may just soak this in degreaser and um, get rid of some of this gooey tar that seems to have built up on the needle.